Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Havermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I want to talk about books, and I want to talk about specific books and specific ages and stages. So let's start with the first one, ages birth to age two. What are some of the books you should read to them? How should you read? How can you introduce your child to the world of books so that they will love them and that they will want to read their entire lives? Of course, when they're just a little baby in arms at the hospital, you can read them pretty much anything you want. But as they get older, each and every day make it a point to uh, pick certain books that you think that they will enjoy. Number one, here's some criteria that I had with my own self. These are just rules that I made up myself in terms of picking out books for my kids. Number one, I started out with bold, bright, and beautiful. I wanted the pictures to be big. I didn't want them little tiny or small. I wanted them big. Think Eric Carl. Think uh, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, or Polar Bear, Polar Bear, or The Very Hungry Caterpillar, or The Very Grouchy Ladybug. Those are all in the category of bold, bright, and beautiful. When you're reading to your child, read in short segments, particularly uh, just their attention span is getting longer and longer, but it's got to develop. So I would say read to them between five and 10 minutes and no longer. And you can read several times during the day between five and 10 minutes long. Number three, oftentimes kids need something in their hands to play with or to fidget with while you're reading. And so give them that thing, you know, any type of a little thing. Or maybe they want something to eat, a little cracker or, you know, a, a, a dish of raisins or something, you know, a vegetable or something kind of healthy and fun for them to eat while they're reading the story and while you're reading the story to them. Now, another thing is that you need to be aware of sometimes when you're reading, I read to my children either in bed right before we'd go to sleep, everybody would pile into our bed and I'd read to them there. But I also read, to, we had a big playroom and I read to them a lot in there. So when my kids were toddlers, sometimes as I would read to them, they would walk away. All right, well, let them walk away. Don't stop reading, continue reading, but get their attention and say, oh, hey, Johnny or Susie or Billy or whatever, look at what is on this picture. Can you see what's on this picture? What is this picture? That will bring them back in and you can talk about that. That leads me to another thing. Don't rush through a book. Take your time. Point out different things on the books. You can point out words to them. You can point out the different characters that are on. Ask them, teach them colors, teach them shapes ask them questions. These are all things that are helping to build their critical thinking skills, even at this young of an age. So, <clears throat> um, also choose books with very little dialogue. Okay, if you want, you're just dying to introduce them to a book that you love, but there's too much dialogue to it, then you're going to have to read it and just kind of tell them the story, and it's going to be, have to be in short uh, little sentences so that they will catch on and read it. <clears throat> Okay, let's see. Now, also there are certain books that kids are going to want to read that, will, that they can actually get up and move to. Let me give you a couple of them. First of all is Where the Wild Things Are. And by the way, these are my books that my kids have had since they were young, and so they're all tattered and broken and colored and everything else. And this one's no exception. But Where the Wild Things Are is a really fun one. And in this book, you know that the wild things are, they do this wild romp. So when you get to that part in the book, then get up and do the wild romp. It will get their blood flowing, and it'll get their minds going, and they'll just have a fun time getting up and moving to this one. Another fun one that I like for this is No Jumping on the Bed. Now obviously you don't want to stop the book and start jumping on the bed, but you could just get have everybody get up and in place that they could all jump, jump, jump in place and pretend that they're jumping on the bed. Any ways, any creative ways that you can think of that you can get your kids up and moving as you're reading the book that will also help them. Also when they're, as I mentioned before, when they're reading, you want to point things out to them. Books that have a strong rhythm to it, kids enjoy. Dr. Seuss, of course, is the master of rhythm. Those are great books, but there's also, this was a favorite of my kids growing up, and also is a favorite of my grandkids. Hands, hands, fingers, thumb, one thumb, one thumb, drumming on a drum. Trust me, you'll start memorizing all of these along the way, and you'll never uh, forget them as well. But kids love this book, and you can actually do all the hand movements and have a lot of fun to them. 
with them rather. <clears throat> Another great book or any of the Mother Goose. All of the Mother Goose books are fabulous. Those are wonderful nursery rhymes that kids really enjoy as well. Now there's also books that are called Books in Your Head. <clears throat> and these are nursery rhymes. These are the Mother Goose. This is like um, the, this little piggy went to market, this little piggy stayed home, where, where you're doing them with their little toes. This is like um, the brave old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. You do it with your knees and you're doing it on the floor. The incy wincy spider, there's hand movements to that. There's also pat a cake, pat a cake, or rockabye baby, or where is thumpkin, or the one that I did with my kids is here's the beehive, where are the bees, hidden away where nobody sees. Soon they come creeping out of their hive. One, two, three, four, five. And then you get up and you act like bees and you're buzzing around and everybody gets stung. So <clears throat> get a book that has all these different nursery rhymes. You probably are familiar with them because of from your childhood. Teach them to your children, go over and over, and they will quickly memorize them and they will love them. Now in terms of board books, <clears throat> board books, I am so grateful that they came out with board books because I think we went through five copies of Goodnight Moon because the kids love that one so much. They literally digested it. But now they have board books in the Pat the Bunny and Goodnight Moon and Runaway Bunny. Anything by Margaret Wise Brown is fabulous. And of course, anything by Eric Carle fits into the category of bold, bright, and beautiful. Anything that has to do with Mother Goose, as I mentioned to you, Again, I've talked about going to the library, go to the library, talk to the librarian, find out what kinds of books that she suggests or he suggests that are particularly good for the ages of um, between birth and age two. In my resource section on my blog, I, give, I, I have it all categorized out. I give a whole bunch of different kinds of books that you can read to the various ages and stages of your child. So check that out as well. Let me leave you with this quote. This is by Ruth Love. If we could get our parents to read to their preschool children 15 minutes a day, we could revolutionize the schools. Think about that. If you're reading to your child just 15 minutes a day, by the time they are ready to start kindergarten, they're going to be primed and prepared to read if they're not already reading. Their language skills, their vocabulary skills are going to be far greater, far more sophisticated than their counterparts, their peers, who have never been read to. Start today. Make it an everyday habit that you are going to read to your child every day until they leave home for college. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow.